This morning, and I want to break our reading up into two sections. The first part of our time together this morning, I want to read uh, chapter 23, beginning at verse 50, and read to the end of the chapter. I want to make a few remarks and then read the first 12 verses uh, of chapter 24 from Luke's Gospel. And then we'll make a few remarks for us to consider together this morning. As always, thank you for joining me. Let, let, let's read this together. Luke chapter 23, let's begin reading there at verse 50. It says, And a man named Joseph, who was a member of the council, a good and righteous man, he had not consented to their plan and action. A man from Arimathea, a city of the Jews, who was waiting for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. And he took it down and wrapped it in linen cloth and laid him in, the tomb, in a tomb cut into rock where no one had ever lain. It was the preparation day and the Sabbath was about to begin. Now the women who had come with him out of Galilee followed and saw the tomb and how his body was laid. And they returned and prepared spices and perfumes. And on the Sabbath, they rested according to the commandment. Jesus died on the cross for us. He died for my sins and for your sins alike. In verse 50, we're introduced to a man named Joseph. He was a man who was a member of the Sanhedrin council, a prominent man. The same hand Sanhedrin that you remember held the ridiculous trials that ultimately condemned Jesus, resulting um, in him being handed over to Pilate. But this Joseph, he was different. A good man, a righteous man, a man of courage, courageous enough to be different. Luke records for us here that he didn't consent to the Sanhedrin's ridiculous decision. It also tells us that he was looking for the kingdom of God. And I just have to tell you, as I consider this man in, in spite of all the opposition, in spite of the mobs, it's really, really encouraging to me that even in the midst of all this darkness, there was light in this man. While they were intent on killing Jesus, Joseph was looking for the kingdom. He was looking for Jesus, and he found him. In Mark's gospel in chapter 15 and verse 43, I want you to look how this is described. It says, Joseph of Arimathea came a prominent member of the council who was himself also waiting for the kingdom of God. Listen to this. And he gathered up courage and went in before Pilate and he asked for the body of Jesus. You know, under the law of Moses, Deuteronomy 21 tells us that anyone who hung on a tree, they weren't to be left on that tree after death. That person was to be buried the same day. Now, you know the Romans. They would have left Jesus there to hang and for the maggots and whatever else, scavengers to, uh, to annihilate Jesus. They would have had no interest in doing anything special for Jesus. So you think about Joseph, a prominent man. He takes it upon himself to approach Pilate. He gets permission to obey the law and take the body of our Lord down from the cross. Now, all of this was in keeping in prophecy. We know in Isaiah 53 at verse 9, 700 years before this reality, Isaiah would say in his grave that being of Jesus was assigned with wicked men, yet he was with a rich man in his death because he'd done no violence, nor was there any deceit in his mouth. You know, we don't talk about this particular Joseph often, and we don't know a ton about him. But I'm reminded here that it's possible to be properly different. Even when everyone is going... Uh, a different direction. I can be righteous. I can be courageous. It's interesting. It tells us that the women are following uh, Joseph in the body of Jesus. And their plan being when the Passover is over, they're going to come back and, and place spices and, and perfume on the body of Jesus. And I think the takeaway from, from that is this, that they didn't expect him to resurrect from the grave. They expected his body to remain there. But then we get to Luke chapter 24. I want to begin reading at verse 1. It says, But on the first day of the week at early dawn, they came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared. And they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of our Lord, of the Lord Jesus. And while they were perplexed about this, behold, two men suddenly stood there near them in dazzling clothing. And as the women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living one among the dead? Verse 6 says, he is not here. He is risen. Remember how he spoke to you while he was still in Galilee. 
saying that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. And they remembered his words and returned from the tomb and reported all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. And they were Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary the mother of James. Also the other women with them were telling these things to the apostles. But these words uh, appeared to them as nonsense. And they would not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen wrappings only, and he went away to his home marveling at what had happened. <laughs> I would have loved to have seen Peter's face right here. The grave couldn't hold him. The son of the living God. Just as the prophets had prophesied, just as Jesus has told his disciples. Man, those words there in verse 6. I got to leave chills up our spine, right? He is not here. He has risen. Brethren and friends, I want to leave it at that this morning. We'll obviously say I have more to say, but for now, I want you to spend the rest of your day thinking about what this means for us, what it means for you. He is not here, they said. He is risen. We serve a risen Savior. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, Father, we are so thankful for your son and his willingness to come to this earth and die on the cross for our sins. Father, may we never doubt your love for us. May we never doubt how much you care for us. Father, you have, in most demonstrative fashion, proven to us that you love us. And Father, for your love and for your mercy and for your grace, for the sending of your son, Father, we are most thankful. Father, we didn't deserve this. Father, we ask that, that you would be with all of us this morning as we contemplate what this means for us, that we would consider all the implications by way of your promises, by way of your faithfulness, by way of your love. Father, thank you for Jesus. Father, we ask you to be with us today. Give us an opportunity to tell someone about the risen Savior. In him, we have hope. And for that, we are most thankful. Father, bless us this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.